Hi, and welcome back to SelfCAD. You're now watching part eight of our 3D Modeling 101 series. By now, you should be familiar with several 3D modeling terms and some basic techniques. What we've covered so far should enable you to understand how 3D objects work in a CAD environment, how to make 3D shapes from scratch, and how they can be edited according to your liking. We also briefly introduced the concept of cutting faces, and the limitations of the popular bevel and boolean tools. In this video, we will dive deeper into face cutting techniques, and we will discuss different use cases and the best tools for solving each. Now you might wonder, why is it important? Or why would I need more tools doing the same thing? The answer is that each method allows you to get different results, and what's more, some of the more advanced face cutting tools allow you to add exact modifications that you can't add with the more straightforward tools. Let's dive into it. How to cut surfaces. By now, you should be familiar with the stitch and scoop, or the Boolean tools, designed to modify the volume of two or more objects but such changes are simply too much when you need just a simple cut on the surface. One such example might be deleting a part of the object only to add thickness and hollow it. Now, from a technical point of view, you should use one of the surface cutting tools since you don't want to change the object's volume. But thanks to SelfCAD's unique materials selection, it's possible to make such cuts with Boolean. It just requires a little creativity. The idea is quite simple. First, we need to change the color of the intersecting objects and then combine or subtract them. Then activate the material selection option and select the parts that originally belonged to the other object and delete them. Finally, add thickness to make the object manifold. You could, of course, go to the materials section and add textures to use for such operations, but SelfCAD recognizes different colors as materials, so it's a much faster option than the alternative. Using the follow path approach. In previous parts, we introduced the follow path tool as an option to create objects and patterns. Now we'll use the same tool to cut surfaces. We'll again use stitch and scoop and material selection tools as we did before. But instead of using intersected volume to cut out the shape we want, we'll use the follow path to cut out the outline of the connection to split objects. To do it, we need to draw and wrap a profile around the object and sweep another profile alongside it to create a sort of wireframe. Now, when we change the color of this new shape and cut it out with material selection, we can easily select the leftover parts and either split or delete them. In this case, the best way to select the pieces is polygon selection, as the deleted part will act as a boundary. And if you want to select a curved surface, you can increase the tolerance option in the advanced settings. This approach is best used for creating complex cuts on curved shapes as the drawing on object mode in 3D Sketch will automatically wrap the profile around the object. Cut with profile. Previous examples rely on the Boolean tools, which means they rely on objects being watertight. So they will fail if you try to cut surfaces that don't have any volume. As you know from the previous episode, sometimes it's easier to start with modifying the plane and add volume to it at the end. In such cases, you can use our Cut With Profile tool, which allows you to cut surfaces without volume, as well as watertight meshes, and using it is quite simple. All you need to do is draw a profile and position it flat on the surface you want to cut. Select both the profile with the object, use the tool, and it's done. Now, if you look at the object's topology, you'll see the engraved profile that you can easily select with the part selection and then modify to your liking. Cut with profile limitations. The first limitation is that it requires a closed area. In practice, it means you have to use closed profiles to cut with or position the profile in such a way it connects perfectly with the edges of the object. Otherwise, the open path will be ignored. The second one is that the entire profile has to touch the surface of the object which can be difficult when working with very detailed objects. Of course, you could use the option to draw on objects, 
but the wrapping option may not always work as expected. In such cases, you should use the follow path approach. Using knife tools. All the previous options were designed to cut with other profiles or 3D shapes. But when it comes to simple linear cuts, you're better off using basic knife tools and SelfCAD excels at those tools as well. Using Edit Details Tools. The Edit Details tool is all about direct mesh editing, which also includes a few linear face splitting options and offers a few different modes of operation. The Drag option allows you to enter precise measurements when cutting the topology, making it a great option for creating parallel cuts to other edges while the draw option allows you to create custom cuts across the object. What's more impressive is that Edit Details does not only cut 3D shapes, but you can also use it to cut profiles, allowing you to draft sketches with surprising precision. Splitting multiple faces at once. As mentioned before, you can draw edges across multiple faces but the drag option is limited to cutting a single face, unless you select the automatic loop or ring finding options, or if you select a few connected edges before entering the tool. Cutting faces is an elaborate task because every new edge has to connect with other edges so that the object stays manifold. This is why loop cutting is so important because it keeps the number of connecting edges to a minimum leaving you with a better looking topology than when you'd cut each edge manually. Using cube selection for cutting. Another great option for cutting multiple faces at once are the plane cutting tools, and we have two of them in SelfCAD. The first of them is the cube selection with enabled exact selection. It allows you to adjust each side of the selection cube to get precise cuts across the entire shape. One downside is that the object is locked in place. So if you want to create a cut at an angle, you should rotate it first before entering cube selection using the plane cutting tool. The other tool is called cut with plane. In a sense, cube selection and cut with plane both use planes for cutting faces. But here you have the option to specify the number of planes with which to cut and the option to rotate them as well. To add a new plane, you just need to enable them from the list and customize them with the sliders below or select the option to draw a new plane if needed. There is also the option to snap the plane to the object, which can add a lot of flexibility when it comes to precise cutting. And in the advanced settings, you'll find the options to split the object with the planes as well as filling in the missing polygons so that the cut pieces become independent manifold meshes. Cutting with extrusion. You can also use extrusion as a cutting tool. You'll create a cut when you extrude faces by an amount that will cause them to become coplanar on the other side. What are coplanar faces? Well, when we talk about coplanar faces, it means two or more faces occupy the same space and we use this term for two different contexts. First, coplanar faces occur when you subdivide a polygon, where a few faces occupy the same plane, which means they are coplanar to each other from the perspective of that plane. Second, in the extrusion context, when two opposite faces touch each other, they become coplanar when they are flat and at the exact same location, effectively covering each other. You can use this to stitch objects together with extrusion. To do this, you need to extrude part of the object to connect it with a matching piece of the second object. This will stitch them together as long as the extruded piece is coplanar with the surface of the second object. Cutting with extrusion, however, has its limits. The first one, the one we already mentioned, is that it can only cut coplanar faces, so if the faces end up misaligned even by a little bit, you will not create a precise cut and make the object non-manifold. The second one is that it can only cut a single plane at a time. If you end up with misaligned faces, you could try using Boolean subtraction. Just create a copy of the face you wanted to extrude, add thickness to it, and then subtract. Cutting with Boolean. 
Cutting with extrusion requires coplanar faces, similar to how cut with profile requires the profile to be coplanar to the mesh, as they are both surface cutting tools. But when it comes to cutting with Boolean, the opposite is true. Boolean requires intersected volume to work properly, and objects that are just touching are not considered a proper intersection, and using Boolean in this fashion might fail. We've improved the algorithms for Boolean to handle coplanar faces, so it will work most of the time, especially with simpler operations. However, as a good practice, you should always make sure the objects properly intersect to avoid any issues. When coplanar helps for Boolean. Earlier in this video, we mentioned that coplanar faces can refer to a situation where you subdivide a polygon into multiple faces. In some cases, subdividing polygons adds a lot of unnecessary detail to the object. But for Boolean, for example, it can help us preserve the object's topology. The reason is both Boolean and fill polygons use constrained triangulation, meaning they cannot create new vertices and just create connections between existing ones. For example, if you cut a cylinder out of a single polygon, you will end up with a lot of tiny faces connected to the original four vertices. But if you increase the resolution, you'll get a much better result. Drawing details. Another tool that uses constrained triangulation is cut with profile, we discussed earlier. But it also uses a simplification algorithm so it can remove some of the added details. To counter that, you can draw an additional profile around the first one to force the simplification algorithm to use the additional details. The idea of adding custom details is similar to how we can add additional details to profiles so that we get the custom triangulation results when later using the fill polygons, which uses constrained triangulation as well. And that's it for this video. We covered all the basic cutting tools and introduced additional techniques for stitching geometries, and we hope you'll be able to use those tools in your project. In the following video, we'll focus on the most common design problems and how to solve them. So stay tuned.